Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be taking you through the five steps towards a research internship for students with no experience. So if you have not applied or if you have not uh, worked as a research assistant before, this video is for you. So keep on watching. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. This is my first video and my name is Nupur and I have recently graduated from Punjab Engineering College with a degree in Aerospace Engineering. So I have done quite a few internships during my undergraduate years. All the three of them were research internships. In this video, we'll be talking about the five steps. The first step that we'll be talking about is when you should start, what's the timeline of applying for an internship. For example, if you want to apply in summer, when, you sh when you're supposed to start. The second uh, thing that we'll be talking about is the CV. So if you already are aware of the first step, I'll be putting the timestamp somewhere on the screen and you can check it out. Uh, yeah, so the second step is uh, how to write a CV. The third step is how to search for professors or uh, places where you want to apply and what is the process that you're supposed to go through. The fourth step is how you're supposed to write a cover letter. Now, cover writing cover letter is quite important and uh, you're supposed to explain everything in a very small amount of words and so it can be a little challenging to some students and the last step is how to not stop applying and at times you have to go through around hundreds of applications and you get only two three replies so not to lose heart so i'll be taking you through the entire process and i'll be putting the stamps over here if you want to go through them or if you want to check them so before we get started you should ask yourself why you want to apply for an internship and how it is beneficial for you Applying for an internship can be really good for you because you'll become sure of what you want to do. Not exactly sure but you'll get an idea of what your field is about. For example, when I applied for aerospace, I did really like aerospace but I was not really aware of the different subjects in aerospace. So when I first applied, I got a, an opportunity to work in uh, gas dynamics and I worked on uh, nozzles. You will basically get an idea of what your field is about and the challenges that you might face in the future so that's the reason why you should apply for an internship because you will come to know if that the, if the field you've you, that you've selected for yourself is actually the one for you or not now let's go to the first step of when to apply for an internship so many students think that you should apply for internships once you're very familiar with your subject um, that might be the case for most and there are many people who do not take in freshmen but According to me, I think you should apply as soon as possible, mostly and if possible in your first year. Because in your first year, you're really fresh and you're really excited about the subject that you're starting. At least that was my case. And I felt that after going for an internship, my love for the subject became even more and I became really passionate about aerospace and what it has to offer. So if, if you're in your first year, it's really good, it's a great opportunity. Do start applying for your internship in your first year itself. Start looking out for opportunities. If not, if you're in your second or third year and you've still not gone for an internship, it's fine. You've not missed anything, but you should apply as soon as possible because then only you'll get the required exposure. And that's not only for your CV, like that's a different thing altogether. But for you in general, you'll get an idea of what it is and what do you, what you want to do in the future. It will really give you an idea because many students think that they're made for research and they really want to go for research. But once they get into research and they kind of experience it, then they realize that it might not be for them. So uh, it's better to know that beforehand and than to you know come to know about it later on when you go for your masters or a PhD or whatever. Okay, so uh, if you go on my blog nuperspeaks.com and if you subscribe to my list. I give you an exact timeline of when you should start. So it's actually basically supposed if you can, if you are going to apply in June, July, that's the summer, you should start uh, looking for internships in December itself because uh, there are a lot of people who are applying to similar prof same professors actually. So it's better to start in December if you can looking for the internships and then maybe you can go on developing a CV whatever. So yeah. Now the so uh, if you want to look if you want the timeline, uh, then you can just. Or subscribe to my list and it will you can go to my blog nuperspeaks.com you can subscribe to my list and it will come straight to your inbox so let's move on to the second point uh, writing a CV now writing a CV can be a daunting experience for a lot of students and uh, many students are not aware on how you're supposed to write a CV 
uh, a CV is supposed to be very structured. You're supposed to start obviously with the name. Then you're supposed to write about your credentials, what you're studying currently, what you have studied, if you're uh, all that kind of stuff. Then uh, sometimes people do write their CGPA, sometimes they don't. It actually requires on depends on the professor. If you don't write it, many times professors might ask you. So you as well write your CG. After this, you're, once you're done with all the credentials and your university, then you go on to write uh, about some of the projects that you've done and then uh, about uh, some of these, uh, about subjects that you've studied, the skills that you've acquired, all the kind of stuff. So again, you can find this template on my uh, blog. Now, uh, the second point in writing the CV is I suggest that instead of using a normal Word document to write it down, you use the software, it's called LaTeX. Uh, it's spelled out as L-A-T-E-X. Now, uh, it is a really good software and uh, it, it makes your writing look really professional. Now, yes, it does involve a very small amount of coding, but it's really simple and anyone can do it, really. It's not that difficult. And if you're not uh, so comfortable with uh, coding as such, then you can go to overleaf.com and you can uh, you can log on over there and you'll find various templates uh, for uh, writing a CV and you can take one of those templates and write it. Uh, those templates are very professional and they look really nice. For a CV again, I suggest, now this is very important, uh, if you're not aware of your strengths or weakness or like what you have to offer because uh, the many students have done things during their uh, school time and they have to apply for universities it might not really be directly related to their field but it's somewhat related uh, but if you have not that's okay and uh, at times a SWOT analysis can really help so SWOT stands for strength weakness opportunities and threat and uh, again I have told if you go to this article itself uh, I have uh, I have written about how to do a SWOT analysis and uh, with an example so basically you should definitely do that and it will really help you look into what you have to do and uh, what you can write in your CV. Now, the third step. Uh, this, in the timeline, if you talk about the timeline, then you should start looking for internships, how to apply for internships during December. You should start writing your CV maybe by the end of December and working on a CV through the uh, first semester or second semester mostly second semester because in winters you don't usually get internships and uh, once you're done with that then the third step is to start looking for a professor or if you want to look into an R&D kind of a job because this this video I made basically for research internships and not generic uh, if you want I can make another video which is very generic and it applies for everything so if you want that please let me know uh, anyways so uh, now the third step is on how to search for professors or for whatever okay so for this what i suggest doing is that you keep a written record of all the research that you've done because i remember when i for the first time when i started searching and i'm like i'll remember all of this it will not be an issue for me i did not there are a lot of people you have to go through there are a lot of colleges a lot of schools that you have to go through if you're applying for a different school and not necessarily your own school basically it's supposed to be the name of the professor what the field of the professor is and what kind of work you can do under him because when you write a cover letter and even when you write a CV for that professor a CV should be kind of personalized so the first step of looking for a professor is making this list and start searching for professors now you can or you should go to the university websites look up the name of the professor or look up the field that you want to work in look up the name of the professor and what work they do write that down now it's better to do a little research on the professor before you go in because you have to it has to be personalized and you have to actually if what's the point of doing an internship if you don't want to do it and you're just doing for the sake of it again i'm telling you please don't do an internship for the sake of it do it so it can help you as well as the professor now uh, when you're looking at the name of the professor you should know what work he or she does so for example i'm looking at the name of the professor i will look at her work or his work and uh, i will look at some of the papers that they've written and if it really interests me it, if it if it intrigues my interest I will read through the papers. Now, you, you, it's okay if you don't want to read through the entire papers. I know as a first year or basically even in college, it can be a little difficult to understand papers. It was for me after I got a hand the subject. It was a little easier, but it still was because the language is quite formal and all that kind of stuff. When you look at a paper, look at the name of the paper. 
if it re if it intrigues your interest a little then go on to read the abstract now the abstract is important it basically summarizes the entire paper and what the outcome of the paper can be then look at the introduction look at some of the figures and look at the conclusion you will basically get a gist of the paper and if that subject interests you in this small activity it takes about 10 to 15 minutes but again you have to spend time on this you cannot just look at the name of the professor look at the name of the paper and put it on the cover letter that's not how it works the person you're applying under will come to know that you're not genuine and that you've not searched him or her before once you read the name of the paper keep a list of that if if you want to keep an electronic record that's up to you i usually prefer a written record so uh, i write the name of the professor the name of the paper the work of the professor the field the professor is in. and then under that i've read the entire paper now i will summarize this paper in my own words maybe in two lines something which i will be later on using in my cover letter now many people like to just skip the step they like who cares i'll just write the name of the paper directly that's not how it works so please please look into the paper and only apply if you're really interested and not for the sake of it because trust me it will work against you not for you now the fourth step is to write a cover letter now a cover letter is a piece of information that the professor or the individual whom you're sending this email to is first going to look at so this is your first impression in this small and yes it has to be small you cannot go on writing about 1000 words no one's going to read that i would not i would not read that so if it has to be around 400 to 500 words and it's supposed to convey who you are where you study what you want to do what you want to work on what is the field of study that impresses you so it has to be small crisp concise and to the point and something which the, which makes the professor click onto your cv because cv is a jackpot cover letter is supposed to direct the person to your cv where he or she can read about you and see uh, what your credentials are what you have done before and if you are fit for the particular internship or not you should start by introducing yourself introducing your field of study and why you want to work under the professor then after that you should talk a little about the professor and what project interests you you remember in a uh, part sorry step 3 we spoke about we wrote the uh, small summary of the paper that's what you're supposed to write on this and it's supposed to smoothly go in with the work now this is the final step you've done everything you have uh, looked up professors you've looked up on how to go for internships you have uh, read a lot of papers you've made your cv you have sent hundreds of cover letters and you're not getting any replies what are you going to do the thing is that it happens and you have to say you can ask i have seen so many people and even me myself you have sent sent hundreds and hundreds of emails and at times you will get no replies in return and yes it can be very disheartening that you've done so much work and no one's going to reply but trust me be patient and keep at it and i am sure that you will get something one thing or the other now uh, many times it's possible that you might not even get an internship and if that is the case please do not be disheartened you can definitely apply for the next term keep applying and keep at it because it is really good to help so if you're really interested in knowing knowing a little more about this please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like if you liked it and if you have any questions or if you have any concern please do comment below and let me know if uh, if this video is cool and if you would like something like this maybe in the future and uh, all the best for applying for internships and i hope you get it and when you get it please let me know we can celebrate together and uh, yeah that's it thank you so much for watching my video see ya